In the world of showbiz, the story of Ed McMahon, Johnny Carson's sidekick, serves as a cautionary tale about the fleeting nature of fame and fortune. Join Facts First as we delve into the compelling life of Ed McMahon, examining the events and choices that led him from the pinnacle of success to the depths of despair. Born in Detroit, Michigan, Edward Leo Peter McMahon Jr. was the son of Edward McMahon Sr., a fundraiser and entertainer, and Eleanor Russell McMahon. During his childhood, he lived in Lowell, Massachusetts, and often visited his paternal aunt, Mary Brennan, at her house on Chelmsford Street. He spent three years working as a carnival barker in Mexico, Maine, and also worked as a bingo caller at age 15 in Maine. To pay for college, he sold vegetable slicers on the Atlantic City boardwalk. His first job in broadcasting was at WLLHAM in Lowell, which led to his TV career launch at WCAU-TV in Philadelphia. He wanted to be a Marine Corps fighter pilot, but before the U.S. entered World War II, the Army and Navy mandated that pilot applicants complete at least two years of college, so he went to Boston College from 1940 to 41. The college requirement was so important that it stayed even after the attack on Pearl Harbor. After fulfilling that requirement, he embarked on his primary flight training in Dallas, followed by fighter training in Pensacola. He earned his carrier landing qualifications and his naval aviator designation. He served as a Marine Corps flight instructor in F-4U Corsair fighters before being assigned to the Pacific Fleet in 1945. But his orders were revoked after the atomic bomb attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, leading to Japan's unconditional surrender. After the war, he took advantage of the GI Bill and attended Catholic University in Washington, D.C. He graduated in 1949, majoring in speech and drama. As a tribute to his contributions towards the National Guard and Reserves, he received an honorary commission as a brigadier general in 1982. Marriages Ed McMahon's love life was as varied as his career, filled with whirlwind romance and heartache. He exchanged vows with Alice Farrell July 5, 1945, while serving as a flight instructor in the Marines. Their union brought four children into the world, but their love story came to an end, and they separated in 1972, with the divorce finalized in 74. But he found love again and married Victoria Valentine on March 6, 1976. Together, they adopted a daughter, Catherine Mary, in 1985. But destiny had other plans for them, and the couple divorced in 1989. McMahon provided a staggering $50,000 per month in spousal and child support. In a twist of fate, just three months before his Tonight Show journey concluded, McMahon found love once again and married 37-year-old Pam Hearn in a ceremony near Las Vegas on February 22, 1992. Pam brought her son Alex into the family, and McMahon's daughter Catherine proudly stood by their side as the best person at the wedding. Financial Woes Ed McMahon, a generous individual who has given much to others, lost his Beverly Hills home to foreclosure after owing approximately $644,000 in payments after a nearly $5 million mortgage loan. Additionally, American Express secured a judgment against McMahon for nearly $750,000 in unpaid bills, and a Washington-based company called Hicks, Inc. claimed he failed to repay a $51,000 loan. In total, McMahon, who earned millions over his 50-year career, was in debt for almost $1.5 million. How could this TV legend find himself in such financial turmoil? His representative, Howard Bragman, believed McMahon's financial difficulties resulted from a combination of failing health, a mismanaged economy, and a bad housing market, a significant factor contributing to the iconic sidekick's financial downfall was his large heart. According to David Fisher, who collaborated with McMahon on his autobiography, For Laughing Out Loud, and his latest book, When Television Was Young, McMahon was an incredibly generous person, often to his own detriment. Fisher added that Ed loved making people happy. He enjoyed carrying cash around, much of which went towards tips. Additionally, the TV legend spent a substantial amount of money supporting his third wife Pam's clothing company. Although the designs were well-received, sold at Saks Fifth Avenue and Neiman Marcus, and even worn by celebrities like Paula Abdul and Sharon Stone, the high-priced fashion line eventually fizzled out. While money continued to be spent, there was little income coming in. 
Surprisingly, McMahon, who was Johnny Carson's sidekick for 30 years, revealed he didn't receive residuals from the successful DVD box sets of The Tonight Show. Additionally, the 85-year-old had been unable to work since breaking his neck in a fall in 2008. Fisher shared a story about how, just a day or two after McMahon's injury, he chose to honor his commitment to review the manuscript for it when television was young instead of going to the hospital. Career Beyond Tonight While Johnny Carson built his fame around Tonight and retreated from the spotlight after retirement, McMahon chose a different trajectory. Over the years, he hosted several shows, including the Kraft Music Hall in 1968 and the talent competition Star Search. McMahon also co-hosted the Jerry Lewis Muscular Dystrophy Association Telethon, a Labor Day weekend staple, and partnered with Dick Clark for TV's bloopers and practical jokes. Together, they became the faces of American family publishers' sweepstakes, appearing on contest entry forums and TV commercials. McMahon was also well-known for his ongoing Budweiser ads. He played supporting roles in various films, such as Fun with Dick and Jane and Just Right, and took on his first regular TV series role in the 1997 WB sitcom The Tom Show, starring Tom Arnold. In 1998, he published his autobiography for Laughing Out Loud, My Life and Good Times, detailing the origins of Tonight. McMahon wrote that before the first show, Carson told him, let's just go down there and entertain the hell out of them, which was the only advice he ever received from Carson. Health Complications and Death In the midst of a seemingly glamorous life, darkness loomed over Ed McMahon's health. On April 20, 2002, McMahon filed a lawsuit against his insurance company for over $20 million, claiming he and his wife Pamela became ill due to toxic mold that spread throughout their Beverly Hills home. The mold allegedly resulted from the improper cleanup of water damage caused by a burst pipe. The suit filed in L.A. County Superior Court also implicated members of the McMahon's household staff and held the mold responsible for the death of their family dog, Muffin. At the time, the lawsuit was one of several cases related to toxic mold that had been brought to court in recent years. The defendants named in the suit included American Equity Insurance Co., multiple environmental cleanup contractors, and a pair of insurance adjusters. On March 21, 2003, the lengthy legal battle concluded with McMahon being awarded $7.2 million from the various company deemed negligent. In March 2007, he suffered injuries from a fall, and in 2008 it was revealed he was recovering from a broken neck and two subsequent surgeries. He later filed a lawsuit against Cedar sinai Medical Center and two doctors alleging fraud, battery, elder abuse, and emotional distress. On February 27, 2009, news surfaced that McMahon had been hospitalized in an undisclosed L.A. facility, later identified as Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, for nearly a month. He was listed in serious condition and admitted to the intensive care unit. On June 23, 2009, he was declared dead at the UCLA Medical Center. His nurse, Julie Coney, RN, mentioned he passed away peacefully. Although no official cause of death was provided, McMahon's publicist attributed his passing to the numerous health issues he had experienced during his final months. Now it's time to hear from you. What's your favorite memory of Ed McMahon? Let us know in the comments section below.